This is Bob. Bob is just chilling in his spaceship one day when his twin sister Alice whizzes by. Bob notices two things. First, her ship seems all squishy. And second, her clock is running slow. What's going on, thinks Bob. Alice has a similar experience. Except for her, it is Bob's ship which whizzes by. And it is Bob's ship which is squishy and which has a slow clock. How can both clocks be slow? When Alice and Bob meet later to discuss their experience, will one twin be younger than the other? Which one and why? This is the twin paradox. To understand its solution, we need to talk about reference frames. At the beginning of the story, Bob and Alice are in different reference frames. This is why they each measure time and space differently. At the end of the story, they share the same reference frame. It is this change of reference frame that leads to the apparent paradox. For the twins to later meet, one or both of them must change to a new reference frame. Suppose only Alice does this. She fires the thrusters in her spacecraft to reverse direction. Once she does this, she has broken the symmetry between each twin's experience. Therefore, when Alice and Bob reunite, Alice will be the younger twin. Let's break this down from each twin's perspective. Bob's Frame Alice will travel five light years to Alpha Centauri, turn around and meet Bob. Each participant has a clock. When Alice passes Bob, all three clocks are synchronized at zero years. Suppose Alice travels at three-fifths light speed. Her clock then runs at four-fifths speed. Her spacecraft contracts by the same amount in the direction of motion. How do we get the number four-fifths? If you haven't done so, see the video in which we derive the gamma factor. Alice takes eight and a third years to travel five light years to reach Alpha Centauri. When she gets there, Bob's and Alpha Centauri's clocks have counted eight and one-third years. However, Alice's clock is slow. Her clock reads six and two-thirds years. The return trip is similar. When Alice and Bob again meet, Alice has aged 13 and one-third years. Bob and Alpha Centauri have each advanced 16 and two-thirds years. Alice is three and one-third years younger than her twin. Alice's frame. From Alice's frame, she and her ship are at rest. Bob is receding at three-fifths light speed and Alpha Centauri approaches her at three-fifths light speed. The distance to the star is contracted along the axis of motion to four light years. Besides length contraction and time dilation, Alice notices a third effect. The clock on Alpha Centauri is ahead of the clock on Earth by three years. You can hear more about this effect, loss of simultaneity, in the Andromeda Paradox video. For now, suffice it to say that we multiply Alice's velocity by the distance to Alpha Centauri. Three-fifths times five, which is three years. However, this clock runs at the same rate as Bob's clock, four years to five of Alice's years. For Alice, it takes six and two-thirds of a year for Alpha Centauri to cover the four light years to meet her. Since its clock and Bob's clock are both slow, they each advance only five and one-third years. Since the Alpha Centauri clock started three years ahead, it now reads eight and one-third years. When Alice turns around, it is Bob who is now approaching her at three-fifths light speed. 
Bob's clock advances an additional three years ahead of the Alpha Centauri clock to 11 and two-thirds of a year. Another six and two-thirds years pass for Alice until she meets Bob. She has aged 13 and one-third years in total. Bob's slow clock counts another five and one-third years to 16 and two-third years. Alice is three and one-third years younger than her twin.